Hi, this is Kenny Albert. You're watching the Power Play Break, the place to talk about pucks. Back here in the Power Play Break with Kerry Frazier. Kerry, before we uh, stepped away from it, we're talking about the transition of uh, from the brawling era to the uh, finesse era. Now, did you ever witness, I mean, when you're out there, like in Gretzky's out there, Messier is out there, these are big names. Did you ever kind of get like caught up in the moment? Well, you know, I can do two things at once, contrary to many people's <laughs> opinion. Uh, but I would see a play, I'd be following so close, 10, 10, 15 feet behind the play, watch Gretzky, watch Lemieux, and, I, and my jaw would drop. Kent Nielsen was another, they called him magic. He was so skilled. He did things uh, with the puck that players of that day, there were very few of them that could, could make those kind of plays. And I can remember my jaw dropping and going, I don't believe I just saw that as I'm pointing to the net on the scoring of a goal or some of the creative things that Gretzky would do. Banking the puck off the, the net and the player would continue on. He'd have possession of the puck behind the goal. Then he would flip the puck over the net, off the goalie's back and into the net or off his leg. Just amazing vision. And you know, vision is really important as a referee. You need to see the ice in advance. And I learned watching Wayne Gretzky on a, on a video clip in 1984, a, a positioning philosophy that I developed and adopted uh, for my benefit because I couldn't see over and around players. And the Canadian Hockey Association put in their referee officiating manuals and USA Hockey adopted it as well. But it was Gretzky skating towards the defenseman, eyes on him up front, for a good 10, 15 feet, and no one else in the camera frame other than the defenseman and Gretz. All of a sudden, Wayne threw a blind, no look, behind the back pass. Yuri Curry was streaking down the wing, came into camera frame, bang, right on his tape. It was a tape to tape pass with a no look from Gretzky. And I went, how did he do that? How did he know that Yuri Curry was gonna be in that space on the ice at that moment in time without looking? I came up with a philosophy of speed, time, and distance, and that he had taken visual checks and knew where everybody was on the ice in advance of a play. He knew where the puck was going to be and where the player was going to be in a given set of time. Amazing vision. Mary Lemieux had the same kind of passing ability and, and vision of the ice, much like we've seen a Joe Montana on the football field, guys that are so special. And that's, that's how I... You think I, that's just a DNA makeup, that they just no, see it totally different, or is it, it learned? Well, it, it's certainly some DNA, but it also is a learned... You can teach that. You can learn that uh, philosophy. All you have to do is take quick freeze-frame pictures around the ice. You see what very quickly how players are leaning, the direction they're going, the speed they're going, if they have another checker within proximity, and if they're, there's no one within 10, 15 feet of them, then you focus back on the puck, then you know time, 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 bang, time to turn my head back there because the computer has shuffled all those freeze frame pictures. Sounds like rocket science, but it's not. Talk about now, you were there for Gretzky's five goals in 39 games. Oh, he broke man. Rocket Richard's record. I mean, people thought that was untouchable. I mean, Mike Bossy was scoring 50 and 50 here on the island yeah. with the Islanders. But that night against the Flyers must have been just unbelievable to see that happen. It was an amazing night, and, and you know, I, I just, it, as he scored three, four, now there's a chance. Pete Peters is the goalie for the Flyers. They pull him from the net. Gretz is on the ice, and I'm thinking, man, this is an historic goal. I'm a little prideful here, <laughs> but I want to be in that picture. I want to, that's going to be forever history. <laughs> and I want to be at the net pointing at that goal when Gretz pops one in. Five goals that night, 50 and 39. And uh, sure enough, he's got the puck. He's heading down the ice, and I'm chasing like crazy. I want to get to the net before that puck enters, and it's an open net goal. He just shoots the puck in. I couldn't get to the, the net to make the point, but I enjoyed watching it from a distance. Those guys can move like the wind. I mean, uh, your conditioning oh had God. to be probably, you know, you're, you're, you're not as, they're in their early 20s. Yeah. You're probably in your mid-30s. Um, your conditioning to keep up with these guys must have been phenomenal. You had a long career. You had over 1,900 regular season games, over 260 playoff games. Talk a little bit about how you had to stay in shape to keep up. I mean, most men, when they hit their mid-30s or 40s, are like, I want to sit on the couch, or I'm going to go hang out with the kids or the wife or whatnot. But you were at an elite level 
uh, of the sport for a long time. Well, you know, Chris, I, I realized very early that I had to be in position to see the play. And I had, I could never see guy your size. I could never see over or around you. I had to advance like Gretz, see the field of vision, see the ice in advance, position myself accordingly so that I was never blocked out. And I used to make a game with myself that, and I would challenge myself that when the play got to the net, as I was chasing the play, and they would go from center to right wing and, and make a play, I wanted to be on that goal line as the shot was taken. I wanted to be there at the net when the shot was taken at the goal. Uh, so I, I pushed myself. My cardio uh, in the training I did, uh, I just continually recognized that one, I had to keep my weight down. Uh, I worked at uh, about 158 pounds. Uh, I'm about eight pounds over that right now, <laughs> but not bad, uh, being out four years. And uh, right to the very last, I didn't want to cheat the game. The game for me was the most important thing. And if I was less than the best that I could provide it, I was cheating the game. Now they've instituted the two-man system for officials. Do you think that extended your career a little bit? Sure it did. Uh, and, you know, it was necessary in the evolution of the game again. Uh, we, the, the red line was removed. I did the Olympics in Nagano in 98. One referee on the ice, no red line. You had to chase the puck from goal line to the far blue line on a, on a uh, stretch pass. It's impossible to do that. No man, a horse can't skate as fast as the passing of a puck. Uh, so a man certainly can't. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, back in those early 80s, they had a power play where Coffey would get the puck behind the goal. They'd have Glenn Anderson inside, skates inside his blue line, stick outside his blue line. They'd have another guy at the far, on the same side as Anderson, at the far blue line, and Gretz in the middle. So as Coffey came around the net, and I would be standing near the goal line, he would pressure down on his stick and fire a hard pass to Anderson at his blue line. He would tip the puck on the other side of the red, blue line so that it would be an onside pass to the guy at the far blue line who then filtered the puck into Gretzky in the middle. As I saw coffee pressure down, I already had my thought process going. I had to move, my skates were already moving, I was in motion and I could chase the puck and try and get to that far blue line. So that's the, the vision you need to have as opposed to standing flat footed, seeing the pass go to Anderson, who tips the puck up to Mess, who then throws it to Gretz, and you're not even hardly started yet. So uh, it, it really is incumbent upon the referees today, uh, even though there's two of them on the ice, to position themselves and see the play in advance so they know where to be and have the best sight line, like a camera angle in broadcasting. 